Hello, so in this video we are going to conclude uh, looking at how to use LaTeX to plot diagrams and we're actually going to finish off by looking at how to shade in areas between graphs or between axes, okay? So um, just like before, we're going to be using PGF plots. You notice that I've removed the parameters which says draw the grid, okay? So we're just going to literally go back to what we had before. So you can just copy and paste those as requested. So we're going to open and close our begin and tick picture. We're also going to begin our axis and end our axis as well. Okay. And I'm going to put a few parameters again in my axis. So whilst a lot of my parameters are set in my style, there are a few which tend to change each time I plot um, a new thing in LaTeX. So as a result, I put them down here instead. So first of all, I need to tell LaTeX that we're going to be using this standard style, which I've uh, defined up here. Then next, what I need to do is define what my X and Y ticks are going to be are. So in this case, I only want um, a couple of X ticks. So I'm just going to go X tick, oops, X tick um, equals, and I'm going to use my curly brackets, and I'm going to go from negative 0.3 to 0.2. Okay, so that's what my X ticks are going to be. My Y tick, I'm not actually going to have any. So I'm just going to go backslash and empty. Okay, and that's just going to tell LaTeX we're only going to have X ticks in this case and no Y ticks. Now, you remember in the last video, we kind of talked through what if we wanted to change these tick labels? So for example, if I didn't want them called negative 0.3 and 0.2, perhaps I wanted them called A and B, for example, then I would use the extra parameter um, X tick labels and actually define what they are going to be respective to negative 0.3 and 0.2. In this case, I'm happy just to have them kept as negative 0.3 and 0.2 on my plot. So I'm just going to keep them as such. and I'm not going to define anything extra. Next thing, I want to define the number of samples. Well, in this case, a thousand samples seems to work with me for the uh, resolution I want. Next thing I'm going to label, um, or I'm going to tell uh, ticks what the X and Y label is going to be. So my X label is just simply going to be X. And my Y label is just simply going to be, you guessed it, Y. Um, and then finally, I'm just going to label, I'm just going to have the domain and the range of the graph that I want to draw. Okay, so how big do I actually want my axes to be? Well, in this case, my X min, so my lower range is going to be at negative 0.52. I think that works relatively well. And my upper value of my of my domain is going to be X max equals 0.4. Okay, doing the same for my range then. So I'm going to have Y min is equal to negative 0.05 and my y max is going to be 0.55 okay now if you're ever kind of sitting there thinking oh how do i know what these are going to be what i recommend is that you actually try drawing the graph that you want to draw in something like GeoGebra or desmos then you kind of get a feel for how much um canvas you need so how much on the y-axis and how much you need on the x-axis as well so i've done that already and i think that these two um domain and ranges are totally fine okay Next thing I'm going to plot then is my node. So I'm going to actually put my origin in because if I just recompile this at the moment, it'll just be an empty set of axes. Okay, you've got negative 0.3 and 0.2, nothing on the y-axis. Obviously, my labels are there. I would quite like an origin position here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a node, um, same as before. Okay, my node is going to be, oops, let me get rid of that. There we go. Node is going to be, I'm going to open and close my curly brackets. I'm going to tell it to anchor the node at the center. And I'm going to put the node label at the southwest. And what is the label going to be? Well, it's just going to be the origin. So it's just like that. OK, and I'm going to put it at. And if you remember in the last video, I can't just put 0, 0 like I would if it was an ordinary ticks picture. Because I'm using the axis style, I need to go axis space CS and then colon to tell it this is actually a coordinate that I'm going to be using. And I'm just going to put a blank set of curly brackets because I've already defined what my um, label is going to be here. And just finally, semicolon that out to make sure it runs properly. So if I recompile, you can see that my origin position appears here. OK, great. Next thing then, I'm going to actually plot a command. I'm going to actually plot a graph. So I'm going to go backslash and add plot because I'm going to add a plot to my graph. OK, and I'm going to put the domain in square brackets. I'm going to go domain equals, I'm going to use curly brackets, and I'm going to go from negative 0.5 to, and remember I need to use a colon here, 0. and then 38158. Now if you're wondering where I get that number from, you'll see in just a second, again, I have plotted this in something like GeoGebra, I've kind of seen a point that I want to go to. If you think it's like, why are you giving it to five decimal places, you will see in just a second. 
So next then, I can come out of those square brackets and put a set of curly brackets. And this is where I can actually type what my, um, what my function is. Now it's quite a long function, so just bear with me. So the first thing is sine of um, e to the power of 3x. Now remember, I can't just put 3x, I need to put 3 times x, okay? Also make sure that you have loads and loads of parentheses in. So to be honest with you, if it's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong here, particularly with complex functions, um, because it might just be that you completely miss a set of parentheses and then later it goes, what are you doing? OK, um, Okay. so I'm going to times all of this function by e to the power of 3 times x. So again, hopefully you can see the way that I'm typing this in. I'm being very, very careful about my parentheses. Helpfully, um, Overleaf does actually highlight which parentheses match up to ensure that I'm kind of on the right lines. Then I'm going to divide all of that by, so again, another set of parentheses, cosine of e to the power of 3 times x. Okay, and then I'm going to add 4 to all of that. Okay, so literally on the denominator, I've got cosine of e oops, e to the power of 3x plus 4, uh, and then the numerator I've got sine of e to the power of 3x times by e to the power of 3x, okay? So let's actually first of all see how that looks. Don't forget your semicolon. Let's recompile that to make sure everything is working properly. It's not going to recompile because I'm spelling it domain rather than domain. Let's quickly rectify that and try recompiling that again. Okay, so hopefully you can see the reason why I'm plotting it up to 0.38158, okay? Because that's literally going to be a root. So you notice that I've gone into something like GeoGebra and I have just found where the root is going to be to a reasonable degree of accuracy and I found it 0.38158. Notice that I tend to give it as a decimal because obviously we are just sampling this. Um, so it's just simply plotting loads and loads of points. So giving it as a decimal is fine. Now you notice that there is actually a mistake that I have made here and it's in um, the y-axis. So if you have a look here, this particular curve goes way up and it actually gets clipped because I'm only telling the y-max to go up to 0.55. Okay, so clearly I've made a mistake somewhere. Let me just have a quick look and see where that is. Okay, so I think that was actually just a mistake with the scaling, possibly when I put the function in. So I've now corrected that um, and you get a curve that looks like this. So it's no longer being clipped. Clearly, if that does ever happen, it's probably just a case of you have just used the wrong X max or Y max. Okay, so probably just using a wrong um, clipping over here. You probably clipped it a little bit too low, a little bit too high. Okay, great. But either way, I've now got a curve which I want. So this is the curve which I'm after. I've got from negative 0.3 to 0.2. Now you kind of see the reason why I'm putting this weird number than 0.38158 because it's literally a root of this function. Now what I want to do is actually shade underneath this curve from negative 0.3 up to 0.2. So literally from the x-axis underneath this curve, much like I'd be doing a standard integration question. So in order to do that, first of all, this plot that I've just added, I need to give it a name. So I'm going to give a name space path equals, and I just need to give it a name. I can't use any um, spaces in this name, so I'm just going to call it f, okay? That kind of makes sense for me. So this curve here, which I've just plotted, the path that I've just plotted from here to here is going to be called f. Okay, now what I want to do is actually shade from negative 0.3 up to 0.2. So I need to actually set that this segment from negative 0.3 or 0.2 of the x-axis needs to actually be the lower limit of where I want to shade. So I don't want to plot it, but I do want to call it a path. OK, so I'm just going to use the path command and I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to call name path, just like before. I'm actually going to call it the x axis. Um, so notice I'm not putting any spaces in here because it is a section of the x axis and it kind of makes sense in this, this case. And I want to basically draw a segment from negative 0.3 to 0.2 on the x axis. So again, because I'm using coordinates here, I'm going to have to type axis space CS. And that's going to be from negative 0.30. So that's my first point. I'm then going to draw a line. So remember, I'm using my line command, similar to I'm using Tick's picture before. Up to, and again, I'm going to go axis, CS. And this is going to be 0 0.20 as above. OK, so this isn't actually going to do anything. So I'm not going to plot it. I'm not going to recompile it. But basically, it's just calling a path from negative 0.30, so that point there, up to 0.20, that point there, that's going to basically be the lower limit of my area. And now this is where the magic happens. So just make sure that you have definitely got the library fill between loaded. Now we can come down here and add another plot. It's not strictly speaking a plot, it's an area, but because I'm adding it to my plot, I'm going to type the command add 
plot, okay? And I'm just gonna give you a couple of parameters that I need. So first of all, I need to tell LaTeX what color I want to fill it. So I'm gonna fill my area just with black, but I don't want it to be entirety black. I want it to be a little bit see-through. So I want it to have a little bit of opacity. So I'm gonna put a comma and I'm gonna type fill space opacity equals 0.2. So in other words, it's gonna fill it with 20% black, but it's still gonna be see-through. So I'm still gonna be able to see anything that's plotted underneath, for example, the y-axis. Okay, so now I'm gonna go fill between and I'm gonna open and close another set of square brackets because now I need to tell LaTeX what I want to actually fill between. So I'm gonna go of equals. Well, this is where I've named my paths. So I wanna fill it between this path F, which is basically the path above, and this section here, the x-axis that I've labeled. So I'm gonna just type this. I'm gonna type F and the x-axis. This is the reason why the names need to be one uh, one single name rather than spaces. And I'm actually just gonna tell LaTeX that I want it to do a soft clip. And I want it to do a soft clip equals, so I'm gonna open and close my curly brackets. There we go. And I want it to do it between the domain. So I don't wanna do it over the entire domain. I just want to do it between negative 0.3 and 0.2. So I'm gonna go domain equals negative 0.3 colon 0.2 and I'm going to put a semicolon right at the very end because I finished that uh, command now. So if I recompile what that should do is bring up a shaded area from negative 0.3 to 0.2. The lower region of that uh, of that area is the x-axis, this thing that I've called here. The upper part of that region that I've called is the curve F which is what I've got there, okay? And I've obviously can change this to be whatever I like. So for example, if I wanna change it to be a funky color like blue um, with 20% opacity, so you can still see the Y axis underneath, for example, then I can absolutely do that. So you can kind of fiddle around and just kind of change whatever parameters you need. But the important thing is that you're filling between F and the X axis. So these two named things, the named path, this one and this one is what you're filling between and you're doing it between negative 0.3 and 0.2. But of course, what that means as well is that if I wanted to add another plot here, for example, if I get rid of this path here and if I just added another plot on the same region, so if I go add plot, I call this path that I'm just about to plot G, so let's call name path equals G. The domain that I'm going to be using is exactly the same as the domain above, so just for convenience, I'm just going to copy and paste that. And actually, let's suppose it's another graph that I'm going to be putting here. So let's just call it negative x squared. Let's make it nice and easy. OK, and let's just fill that. And obviously, I just need to change this because it's no longer called the x axis. It's now called G. But what it now means is that if I illustrate this, we're going to have the region uh, above, which is this graph here, the graph that I drew above. And you can see the graph negative x squared underneath, and it's been plotted between negative 0.3 and 0.2. And obviously, if I wanted to add something to that now, I don't know, let's suppose I want to add one to that, then clearly what it's going to do is it's going to shade between this graph and the graph that I've just plotted. So it can be quite powerful in terms of what you actually want to plot. Clearly, that's a little bit too big um, just because it's off the screen, but you hopefully kind of get the idea. Okay, in fact, let me just change that to one. Let me change the Y max this time. Let's change that to two. So then hopefully we get a little bit more of the graph on there because it's been clipped off. So again, if I recompile, oops, let's make sure I close that bracket. Don't panic when you see the red screen. It probably just is a case you've missed a bracket or something particularly if not a lot of change. So there you go. So hopefully you can see here, you've got the graph y equals negative x squared plus one. You've got the graph that we've just plotted underneath this uh, sine of e to the power of three x business. And you can clearly see that it's been shaded between those two graphs. That can be quite handy.